There are six steps to follow in order to make the most use of a data governance maturity model while avoiding its pitfalls. The following lesson covers the second step, that of performing the assessment to identify what level of maturity your organization lies on for the chosen data governance maturity model. This is one of the lessons that is covered in the data governance maturity model online course that is available right now. The course offers much more than the details of these six steps. It covers the basics, the concepts, the characteristics, and the benefits of maturity models. It provides an overview of plenty of data governance maturity models and data management maturity models. It covers the shortcomings and downsides of a data governance maturity model and ways to navigate around them, plus lessons learned from organizations that are using them. As a bonus, I'll also provide an overview of other data maturity models such as data analytics, data lakes, and much more. If you want to learn all there is to know about data governance maturity models in order to establish or to improve your data governance program, I'll post a link to the online course in the video description below. Without further ado, here's the lesson on how to perform the assessment to identify what level of maturity your organization lies for the chosen data governance maturity model. For the assessment step, I would like to split it into three parts. Gathering the information, performing the assessment, and visualizing the results. Let's start with the first part. In order to perform the assessment, you need to start gathering some information. Now, I first recommend to identify the leads who are responsible for each domain or subject area of the maturity model. Explain to these leads why the organization is implementing maturity modeling what the expected outcomes are, and how their input is invaluable to the effort's success. Generally speaking, I think the leads responsible for the subject areas are very receptive to maturity modeling. Why? Because unlike an audit, a maturity model is a resource that allows staff to advocate their needs and to say, well, these are the resources that I need in order to achieve successful data governance. Or, the model says that we need to classify our data, so that needs to be on my work plan this year. In turn, these leads could help you identify other stakeholders that need to be consulted in order for you to perform an evaluation of your as-is state. Depending on your organization and the level of data governance maturity that you have, these stakeholders could include the data governance council members, data stewards from different areas of the business, data custodians, other IT professionals such as data architects, database administrators, privacy and security officers, software and web developers, data analysts, and business intelligence professionals, and so on. It can definitely be a hefty long list. Depending on the maturity model chosen, look into stakeholders for the domains that you need to perform an assessment for, and then gather their input through a series of one-on-one -on -one interviews or focus groups, surveys, and so on. This can definitely also be a hefty effort. That's one of the reasons why some companies hire a consultancy to do this work for them, which is part of that consultancy's package that I mentioned before. If that's the option that you go for, I recommend to also ask for the raw information back, the raw data that was gathered, and not just have the end results of the survey presented to you. Why? Because I think it's worth reviewing it. Because even though consultants could come in with years of experience working in similar companies or in the same industry, there could also be nuances of your own environment that might be misunderstood or misinterpreted from those that are not immersed into it. The other side of the coin is that a consultancy or a vendor, whatever the external party is that you hire, they also bring objectivity to the process. And within your organization, you're probably also going to find erroneous assumptions. You're also going to find differing opinions about what needs to be improved and bias regarding who is responsible for the improvements. An objective third party can help navigate these assumptions, opinions, and biases. Just be aware that most vendors will push their own maturity model because their models usually require or suggest organizations to buy the vendor's software. While most vendor software is good for advancing the maturity, you want to make sure that the model you're using fits the business objectives that you have and 
as I mentioned before, it is affordable. So don't lose sight of that consideration that we mentioned in the previous lesson. Besides gathering and eliciting your stakeholders, you should also start gathering and going through various documentation and artifacts, such as data models, data dictionaries, the business glossary, procedure manuals, standards and policies, and so on. Now, you don't need to go into a lot of details here. Sometimes just the existence of some of these artifacts will give you the insights on what maturity level your organization is at. And you can simply start by creating an inventory of these artifacts. Do you have a data governance terms of reference? Check. Do you have a business glossary? Check. Do you have a data quality standards? And if so, what domains do they cover? Et cetera, et cetera. And at the same time, the lack of certain documentation and artifacts will also give you a similar indication of your as-is situation. Now with the information gathered, it's time to complete the second part of the assessment step and that is conducting that assessment. And there are a few ways of doing it. The most common way is to really fill out a survey. The complexity of the questionnaire, the survey, the granularity of the questions, and the time and effort that you need to put into it varies. I wanna show you this one example, and this is an older example from Colito's Data Governance Maturity Assessment. Now, I will also link to it in the section below if you're curious in filling it out but let's quickly go over it now. So let's fill it out. I think we need to provide our contact information. We'll do that. Now, sometimes in the beginning of the survey, they would ask more information about your company so they would know how to market to you later on. So this information is not as necessary for the maturity model but also, again, the other side of the coin is that sometimes they can use this information to be able to measure your results against similar organizations. Now, this survey can be a little bit simplistic, so there are not going to be too many questions to go through. And I believe they actually have four sections that they're asking because that's what their domains are. There are four different ones, and they're just asking six questions each. Again, I'll post a link below to see if you're curious in filling it out. Unfortunately, it seems to be an old version of this assessment, so it's no longer being maintained by them. So you'll not receive a custom report as a survey promises, but really it only takes about 15 minutes to fill out, so it's not a big time commitment. And just in case you'd like to go over the questions that they ask. Now, as you're filling this out, you might notice that the answers for each question corresponds to their four maturity levels. So this one in particular is a very simplistic survey as I mentioned, but I wanted to provide you with a real life example that I'm allowed to share with you as to what you might expect from a survey type maturity assessment. You need to be aware of a couple of things. The questions and the provided options can sometimes be interpreted. For example, in the question for, what is the process for resolving data issues? This third option right here can be a bit unclear. Issues are recorded. Is that all data issues or is that some data issues? Now, I would interpret it that it refers to most issues or at least 80% of the issues, but someone else might interpret it as any issues. And you know what? It's good enough that you have a process in place to record them. So then they select this third option as their answer. The takeaway here is to try and achieve consensus. Achieve consensus from the domain leads or the stakeholders identified in the previous part as to how you're interpreting the questions and the choices. Whatever the interpretation ends up being, make sure you document it. It's important to do that in case you leave and someone else takes over, or if you're comparing your results with another company that went through the same process, it's good to confirm your interpretations with them. This also comes in handy when you do the reassessment that we'll go over later. Now, the other method is to work with a vendor or a consultancy, a third party, to create that assessment for you. And I think I've covered that a, a little bit already. And the last method is applicable for those maturity models that don't provide a survey type assessment tool. And they really only provide a descriptive, the narrative, such as the one that we see here in this example from the Stanford's Data Governance Maturity Model. Here, we are going to go over the described characteristics and then we correlate that with our own environment. But here too, we need to be aware that there is room for interpretation. 
In the Stanford example here, what does a significant portion of targeted audience mean? Good question. So a lot of the assessment itself can be subjective. And depending on who fills it out, you might get different results. This is also because it is mostly qualitative measurements that are being offered. Now, lastly, the third part of the assessment is to visualize your results. And this example that we're seeing is from Stanford again. And the first thing that we see is this tabular format on the left that is where we're plugging in our scores obtained by our self-assessment or the survey or the third party and so on. And we see where we stand by averaging out the scores for each domain or subject area that we measured. In this example, we are at a level two data governance maturity, but what's also helpful is that we can see how we score for each of the areas, each of the domains, each of the subject areas. This is a great indicator as to where we might need to put in a bit more effort to improve. We can also see how our scores chart against a goal, and in some instances, we could even see where we are in comparison to our peers or our industry's average. But to be honest, those last two, I've only seen them from vendors and from consultancies. Now, lastly, we can see a similar result that is represented here by the spider chart. And I think I mentioned in the maturity models characteristics lesson that I find a lot of data governance practitioners are fond of it. So maybe you are too. Maybe you'll start using this one as well. And that concludes the assessment step.